ShireSociety.com. To that, to that area by Alexander the Great. Back in the days when New Hampshire was more of a concept than a place I'd actually visited, I got a lot of my New Hampshire news from this man. Ed Nail is a big part of the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. He hosted New Hampshire Taxpayer Radio back around the 2003 era. Maybe he still does. But it turns out he is still on the radio on a different show uh, at GraniteGrock.com. They have a podcast. I don't know if it's actually on the radio. Uh, well, straight answers are tough to get. Anyway, poor Ed has been, I guess, for at least the last ten years, maybe the last eight years, I should say, he's been pushing the boulder uphill on the issue of voter fraud. After probably thousands of man hours that he's probably personally put into it, the issue is finally sort of in the press. But anyway, I was listening to his the Granite Rock radio show the other day for the first time actually and listening to them talk about this made me feel a little bit guilty that I haven't raised more concerns myself regarding voter fraud. I should at least not be part of the problem of being a media outlet that ignores it. Now, do I know that it's happening? Well, no. Am I going to do anything about it beyond making a video? Probably not. Because I have concerns about what Ed's doing uh, just as I have concerns about voter fraud itself. And here's why. Let's assume that Ed's right and there's massive voter fraud in New Hampshire. He's saying, just as an anecdote, that one of his allies, uh, a longtime political operative in the Dover area named Dave Scott, has been making some outstanding claims. Scott says that 84, or, uh, or at least Ed Nail is reporting that Scott says, 84, or 80 something, of the pieces of mail that he sent out to voters in his district came back undeliverable. And my understanding is that constitutes like a like a number around 10% of the votes cast in the relevant election. So that could be pretty significant. That Those kind of numbers could turn almost every election in New Hampshire if, you know, they all went one way or another. But one of the problems with all this, it's a lot like researching the death of JFK, you know, or, you know, becoming a 9-11 truther or something like that. You can do all the research you want and find all the damning data that you want. But then how do you transfer that information believably to third parties that, that don't know whether they can trust you? I mean, Ed can have all the stats he wants and no one's going to care in terms of the average person, because they don't know who Ed is. They don't know whether they can trust the source. I tend to trust him since I've known about him for so long and have never heard of him being wrong. But that doesn't matter. I'm just, it's preaching to the converted to make me think something. The other problem is actually the success that they've been having. They've started to get some traction with, we you know the Attorney General has indicted some people on voter fraud issues and that's what they've been begging him to do all along but again that's the problem you've got these ostensibly independent small government people that but they're begging the government to solve a problem for them for almost a decade maybe longer and how many of you have ever even heard of Ed Nail after all the work he's put into it it's almost like he, he's like the Libertarian Party, right? He's like, he's taken this problem that the authoritarians have presented him with, and he said, oh, well, the way I'm going to solve this problem is I'm going to, you know, try and stand in front of this glacier and push on it and make it move a little bit slower. Well, there's got to be a better way. And I think, actually, Ed may have come up with it himself. He's talking about just walking up to some of these addresses where these alleged uh, voter, you know, voter fraud incidents happened, and <laughs> just walking up to the front door with a camera and starting to ask questions of whoever lives there. Now, I think that might be going a little too far because you're do it's too much of an approaching private property type of thing, people's homes. Some of them might not be guilty. There's going to be legal issues with him running a camera on someone else's private property. He'll get hauled in for wiretapping. But at least now he's on the right track. He's thinking about do you know talking about doing something himself or his activists doing it. 
instead of having the government do it. You know, supposedly the state senator, Martha Fuller Clark, had, you know, a number of people living at her house who just happened to vote for all Democratic candidates during a particular election. I support Martha Fuller Clark's right to have as many people at her house as she wants. But the interesting thing is by having them claiming residency there, she was apparently admitting that she has something she's not allowed to have. Apparently, she lives in a historic district, a district where she's not allowed to have renters or tenants. This, again, according to the folks at GraniteGrack.com. Ed might be a lot closer to, he might be further in the clear if he were to just, instead of walking up to someone's door, maybe uh, stay on the, um, on, the, on the road in front of their house. Uh, and he, you know, he could always hold a sign there. He, someone else could go up to the door without a video camera and certainly knock. Um, I would like to say it would be nice if Ed could, you know, talk to these people somewhere away from their home. But then, of course, to, to make that meeting happen, you'd almost have to stalk somebody, or it would look like stalking. People, people would accuse you of stalking if you figured out where they were going to be that wasn't their house. The other thing he could do is start calling Free Talk Live. I've never heard him call Free Talk Live. It would get a much bigger audience than anything he does on his radio st stations or podcasts. They've definitely been naming names. Again, almost anything is better than hijacking the taxpayers and deputizing them for the purpose of solving this problem. That's kind of what they're doing whenever they you know, commandeer the Attorney General and have him work on this. Although, I guess I would rather have the Attorney General working on Democrat voter fraud than have him prosecuting victimless criminals. So, I don't know. Maybe I should soften my opposition to using the Attorney General. But anyway, there you go. Just some thoughts on voter fraud. Wanted to get the idea out there, make sure I wasn't completely ignoring it. Ed Nails, a lot of fun. Very scrappy, conservative, libertarian-leaning activist. Glad he's out there. You can find more about him at cnht.org. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. Didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com. <laughs>